for us, every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Steward and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm in London that can help you with all aspects of your legal work. If you are looking at immigrating to the United Kingdom, Stewart & Co. can help you to set up business, buy houses in the UK, and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish. For all your general immigration work, we can help you with that as well. If you apply for any form of visa, whether student visas, settlement visas, marriage visas, or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart & Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. And do small or big projects with the same dedication and commitment as we do. With the reputation as the leading printing company in the country, when it comes to major projects and innovative solutions, we always deliver in high quality, thus receiving the trust and confidence of our clients. From the moment your order is placed to when it is delivered, we believe in exceeding expectations from the sales manager to the production team, the account manager, and the person delivering your material. We have state-of-the-art equipment and a highly experienced and competent workforce that enables us to deliver top quality work on time. At reasonable prices, we provide our clients with multiple solutions right from conceptualizing, designing, printing, binding, publishing, and distribution. For all your printing requirements, we are strategically located at the Sankumsila Highway, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. We print what you desire. Introducing Gamtel Corporate Internet for home use. See who everyone at home can be online at the same time and for less than you think. Now daddy can be home early and mommy and dad with the family can all have fun together. You can now complete your work at home with our stable, secure and super fast home broadband fixed wireless internet. Home internet couldn't be faster. Download, stream videos, research, play games, learn online and work from the comfort of your home. You can do with the internet. Join Gumtel Sihu today and enjoy the fastest home wireless broadband internet at an affordable monthly subscription. Gumtel, creating a brighter future in communications. In our studio, um, Sini Sengo, oh, okay. um, who is one of the victims of the April 10 11 um, incident that happened in the Gambia. And of course, a um, renowned human rights activist, Mr. Mari Jobadi. It's good to have you here in our studio today, Uli. Coming up on Care Fatu. Um, as a victim, you have been shot on the line. Can you just please tell us how your journey has been like? You were in grade 10. Did you manage to finish your education? And what have you been doing for the past 19 years? Mm, no, I did not finish my school and since then I have been at home.
In communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel, Yaibarom. Thank you very much, Sajo. Um, having seen here and Madi in our studios, we're honored because today we're talking about April 10 and 11, which is definitely a dark day in the history, history of, of Gambia, of Gambia um, considering the fact that about 14 people were killed, gone down by people who were paid to protect them. And 19 years on, definitely having these two people to talk about what happened, the events of it, it's definitely a pleasure having you here, guys. And like Welcome. we said, it's a very dark day in the history of the Gambia, yes. 19 years on, and someone might say that justice is still not served. Yes. I will start the interview with you, um, saying, What is your recollection of that day? How do you remember that day? Thank you very much, Sajo. It was a very, very crazy day for us as students because the reason why we go out to demonstrate or to show our anger was because a colleague of ours, two of them were violated. A boy by the name Ibrahim Abari was beaten by fire, fire service personnel and they forced him to feed cement that which leads to his death and we have this girl who came from Basse to the inter schools at Bakau. The security personnel who were there to protect her were the very person who raped her. That was the reason we've come out to talk to the government in peace so that they could do something about it. Those that caused the crime to be brought to justice but we were welcomed differently. What changed? Because I understand you were out to um, have a peaceful protest. What changed that day where you were attacked? That, that was the command, probably I would say, is the command that they get from their superior ones. Because after all, even the president was not in town, but the guy or the person who was in charge at the time was the first one who came out to condemn what the student did and the sad part of it was he she was a lady a mother for that matter was that the vice president was the vice president at the time says the very person who first condemned what the students were doing and went further to allege that the shooting started within the students Exactly. Um, coming to that, um, the shooting started from the demonstrators. That's something we all can clearly remember. And I remember as a young girl, I sat and I said, how is that possible? If the shooting starts from, have started from the demonstrators, how come none of the, like the, the security, security personnel were shot. are dead? I mean, or they have been shot. So but that how does someone out for a peaceful protest start shooting? Exactly. So it's a bit confusing. Definitely. It's definitely confusing. And that's exactly what Sene is saying. They went out to ensure that they were, pro they were going to protest because this is what happened to their colleagues. And which I think was definitely, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because if you are not happy about something, you go out and say, we're not happy, this is what we want to do. So for that statement to come from the former vice president, I mean, Madi, as a civil rights person, what do you, what's your take on that? Um... I think it's tragic um, for the vice president to say that um, simply because a vice president is a duty bearer. That is, you have a responsibility by law to protect human rights. So where citizens are exercising their rights, uh, what is expected of elected and appointed officials is to make, create the space for citizens to enjoy exercising their rights and not to suppress it and not just to suppress it but also to uh, criminalize them, to demonize them 
um, as they did, you know, to uh, create the uh, image that uh, the students, or, because these are, in fact, school children were shooters, you know. So I think that that's very uh, tragic, and that explains really um, the whole uh, story about this matter. So that, as you said, we've gone now 19 years, and um, two governments, and they cannot still address this issue. I think that's very shameful as, as a society, uh, as a government, um, that we would have something like this uh, continue to prevail. Where were you on that day, Madi, and how do you remember that day? Yeah, m myself, um, then I was a journalist, actually, at Radio Gambia, and I think uh, it probably was my off day, so, and I might have been around Dipakunda, so I remember walking down you know, that route was Sakuna Market. I mean, um, you know, coming towards Westfield. Um, but I guess that was the time to probably the shooting had already taken place or was taking place. So there was a lot of people moving, you know, running, um, shops closing, you know, uh, yeah, because I mean, coming down from the Bakuna and up, you know, you're getting word around things that happen so they are not clear and normally shopkeepers would close their shops because they are scared of looting might take place um so people just run in yeah so um yeah as a journalist then try to get to you know understand what was happening and so so yeah. Saini, um as a victim you have been shot on the leg can you just please tell us how your journey has been like you were in grade 10 did you manage to finish your education and what have you been doing for the past 19 years Mm, no, I did not finish my school and since then I've been at home. Mm, thank God that I am with Sajo here. She knows a little bit about my history. She's like a sister to me now. She's very close to, to my younger sister. It's been crazy for the past 19 years. It, I feel too emotional when I recall all that uh, I went through from being shot, um, referred to the RVTH. I've been there for complete two months. My condition was deteriorating from one level to another because the doctors then give the impression that we will all be okay here they can care us but with some of us that are that sustain serious injuries things we are getting out of hands so they decide to evacuate us to another country for for the treatment initially they will they plan to take us either in the UK or US but what some members of the government, they decide to change their minds because they believe there were Gambians abroad who might interfere in our affairs and can use us as a political... Uh, they use, they use you to score Yeah, to yeah, voice. exactly. So they decided to change their minds because then there were this lot of Egyptian doctors in the RVTH. So we were then uh, evacuated to Egypt but the, fa the sad part of it we spent five months in Egypt the government was just able to pay one month of our medical bill when we when we completed that one month at the hospital the hospital authorities just one fine day they came there with the security guards and said your your medical fee bills has been exhausted so we have to discharge you guys from the hospital it was so crazy then i just i went i have my i underwent two surgical operations but yusufa was there too he's been shot from the neck so he has this spinal his spinal spinal problem so he is paralyzed from the neck downward 
he was on a wheelchair, everything that he does, he is aided by somebody. Seeing him on, on a bed, just one day somebody came and told you, you guys would have to leave. So our doctor then, he's an Egyptian, he's a very fine, kind somebody. He has to sacrifice from his own money, from his own savings, to take care of us for another two or three months again. Because through that, I have to go on, on other two operations again. I, went, I have five operations because of the, this gunshot's injury. The five bridge. different operations. With Yusufa, I can't... He went through a lot. When I look at him, at, I sometimes feel fine because at least I can move from one place to another. I can do certain things for myself. But with Yusufa, all that he did, Somebody, someone has to help him. Someone has to take care of him. If he wants to lie, somebody has to lift him up from the wheelchair. If he wants to get up, somebody has to lift him. So at the point where your medical bills were exhausted, what did the Gambia government do? Did they step in? The doctor tried to contact them, but there was no response from the government. Because when we were being taken to Egypt, we went with one escort, a female nurse. She only spent one week with us at the hospital, and she has to come back. The remaining months that we were there, we were just, we were there on our own. If I can help Yusufa, I would. Then Hassan was there. We have another boy, Hassan. He was pretty much better because he was short in her stomach, so at least he can move from one room to another, checking on Yusufa. Actually, I shared the same room with him. It was, it was just crazy. So what the doctor did was, he has to call on the hospital authorities and tell them, now, he's not doing it for the Gambia government, but he's just doing it on our behalf, that he will take responsibility of our medical bills. That was how we were allowed to remain in the hospital and continue our treatment. How has life changed? Because it takes so much to be who you are. You can walk for yourself and next thing you know, something is wrong with you physically and then you have to be aided to be able to walk. How, how are you living that life? It's not easy anyway, but I've, I really feel bad. I have to take it though, but I do feel bad most of the time because if it was a natural thing that I was born like this, yeah. then I would know this is from God. But being shot by somebody whose main target was to kill me because I have 14 of my peers who are not alive today. I could have been among them. I have I survived it. Thank God for that. But it has changed a lot in my life because my educational career has come to a standstill. I have colleagues who, who got their masters now. I have a friend who is a corporate manager at an institution. I could have been one of them. I could have had my master's degree. I can give you an example. You see, you look at the TRRC, you see the councils, maybe apart from the lead council, the deputy and the other councils, if they are up to 35, maybe probably it would be one person. I could have been somebody sitting there leading, asking questions to perpetrators. But because a government whose main responsibility was to protect me, to take care of me, to give me the environment so I can complete my school and contribute to the socio-economic development of the okay. country, is the same person who gone me down 
and bring all my life to a halt. Yeah. Um, Mr. Jabate, as a civil rights activist, what have you and your colleagues and your organizations been doing in terms of ensuring that um, the victims of effort, in terms of number one, awareness? Because I believe this is something that happened 19 years ago. There's a lot of people who don't really know the history behind it, or they're not even aware, especially the younger generation. So what have you, like what have the civil societies been doing in terms of raising awareness, and also in terms of ensuring that the flight of these victims and the survivors uh, being, like the government, uh, held accountable for? Or what are they doing? Yeah, um, this, since 2000, um, I mean, until 2016, government's on a dictatorship. Uh, there was every effort to make sure this day is wiped out. It's not uh, commemorated. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, it is not taught in our schools. But I, I remember um, uh, we used to have Pan-African clubs that I was part of people who organized these clubs in secondary schools, like Nusrat, St. Peter's, you know, Gambe High School at the Gambia College. And um, I, I remember in early 2000, 2003, 4, 5, um, students themselves, we would organize those clubs to commemorate April 10 and 11, uh, mainly at Nusrat uh, School Hall. You know, um, So in terms of the wider civil society, particularly the bigger organizations, um, there wasn't any um, effort, really, uh, to um, keep the memory of this day alive. And as I said, simply because the environment was in there to do so. But you'll find Gambians outside of the country at civil society organizations uh, would always mobilize around this. And even some individuals in, in this country uh, would keep the memory of this day alive every year it comes, even if they have to write an article in the newspapers, particularly when social media became prominent. So uh, by and large, uh, that's what's been happening until, of course, uh, after 2016. So that from 2017 to date, I think the civil society has become the main driver. I think this issue um, needs to go beyond just merely yeah, commemorating, but also just beyond <coughs> like civil society organizations. I think it is high time uh, all Gambians uh, um, get involved seriously. Um, I'm talking about children, I'm talking about parents, and you know, people in the civil society, in the private sector, uh, public officials, regardless security of forces, regardless of which section or unit or where you are, you know, because listening to Sini here, it poses a moral question. Really, I mean, what would I have, uh, would I do um, if it was my child, you know, if it was my sister or my brother or niece or nephew? So every government needs to ask yourself this. And how can you live in a society uh, where you have a situation like this? You know, um, we are the owners of the government as citizens. Uh, we create a government, I mean, elect people uh, to run that government. We give them all the tools and resources um, to run that government whose purpose is only one. Government has no job other than to protect and fulfill the rights of citizens. That's the only job government has. Yes. Now to have that government, as he said, take those weapons and turn it against our own citizens. Um, it's a huge tragedy. But that is the very reason why uh, all citizens need to stand up to make sure there is justice for this. Because the message we are promoting never again makes no sense if there is no accountability. You know. And like uh, Sini here said, um, I have seen students, I mean, of his, uh, you know, I mean, age, that is uh, in 2000, those who were students then, I have seen them today, they are managers. They are directors, they are CEOs, you know, in this society, all right? And well, as you said, why couldn't Seni have been a CEO today? Yeah. Or, you know, be a, a, a council at the TRRC or 
be a commissioner in the CRC or you know, uh, be a director in any government office or lead in any civil society organization. You, you know, the only reason it, it, it did not happen is because the state itself, the protector, came to, you know, damage him. You know, so for me, you know, I'm involved in this um, first and foremost out of a personal conviction. You know, because if, if, if my child was shot, as that happened, I would want the whole world to come and join me, you know, to sympathize with me, to uh, fight for me. So uh, for me, I, I'm into this out of a personal conviction that, I mean, uh, my sense of morality, my sense of, you know, honesty tells me I have to stand up, you know, with Saini and all those victims. And I think it, it is important our people understand it first and foremost from that point of view, that you know, first and foremost, this is a personal issue. Yeah, it, it is. Um, the, the it could happen to anyone. Yeah. yeah. So, and and you know, which I have been saying for years, if you live in a society, one right is broken, and the citizens are not alarmed, are not angry, did not get up to make sure that right that has been damaged is repaired in full immediately. Then rest assured, no one is safe anymore in that society. Who would have imagined, 18 years later, the same paramilitary forces would shoot governments in Faraba? It brings us back to security sector reform. Do you right. think that this is something that we really definitely need to look at? You know, Sajo, um, there are two pillars of government um, that cuts across. Uh, that's the civil service and the security sector. The, these are the, our pillars of governance and, and de uh, development. All right? and, and these are the things that run government as an institution. So that when they are polluted, when they are um, weak, uh, when they are corrupted, uh, rest assured there will be um, abuse, violations, and of course impunity. Because those violations would not be addressed. And since they are not addressed like this April 10 and 11, yeah. what happens is people commit crimes. And they continue to, that crime continues unarrest, uh, unaddressed. The victims continue to suffer. The perpetrator gets rewarded. Mm -hmm. And this is what is happening right now. If you read the April 10 and 11 commission report, you will find names of security officers. Today, all right? I wouldn't name names uh, because I want every government to make sure you go and get that report. You will see names of security officers today. 2000, mentioned 2000, today, they are still in the government police force. And who in the key PIU, positions yeah, as a matter of fact. And like head in units. Yes. Yeah. But we've seen it yeah. in the so, RRC as well. Yeah. So, as you said, you know, uh, two things I would have thought uh, this government, this president would do immediately he takes over. Mm -hmm. All right. And that is to do a civil service reform yeah. and a security sector reform. Because dictatorship corrupts not just institutions and weakens them, but it even corrupts individuals. Yeah. It damages the very norms and values and standards of that society. So it is important that the, this president, you embark on a serious civil service reform to look at the laws, to look at the practices, the culture, the way of life in the civil service, but also to remove individuals who have held strategic positions, you know, in that civil service and perpetrating a culture that has seen the civil service become corrupt, inefficient, and all that. Similarly, you look at the uh, security sector. Now, but this government, since they came, I can tell you right now, Gambia has more than five international, regional uh, Interventions for security sector reform, ECOWAS, AU, UN, EU, you know, other governments in this country supporting, trying to support the government, government to do a security sector reform. But this government is not interested to do that. And so long as security sector reform is not done, it means the laws, security laws, you look at the NIA Act, you know, that act needs to change. You look at the Police Act, you know, that act needs to change. You look at the, the practices that exist in the Gambia police force, all right, in the intelligence, in the prisons, 
the prison act they need to change um, I think that's a very in, an interesting discussion. Yeah. What we are going to do is go with our first commercial break. And when we return, we will look at state accountability as far as this April 10-11 issue is concerned. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Coming up on Care Fatu. Where, where, does, where, where does state accountability begin here? Where? Repealing the Indemnity Act? Reparations? Where? Sampa, <laughs> Wow, <coughs> 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 Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Bruce Roundabout and into the heart of nature, where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four-bedroom story with five-year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Fay lempo warugal la si kepo ko hamne domi reo minga ak nyufi deke. Bufeke ne chi ak mi sa kom kom wesu na nyar fuka ak nyenti june dalasi. Mbete wer buneka dinga amluto lu si nyari june dalasi. Lempo silangurgi di sukande ku ngi lige yoku te reo mi. GRA moi banghas bunguri gambia sas ngi mu feye ku lepo lui lempo chi bi reo mi. Betak na GRA di yegal fay kati lempo ine warugal la pur nyu fay lunyu nan withholding tax on contract payment. Manam, bepa kontrak bu wa johe. Te si bi reo mila nyu tokon, hali si kontrak bi ngen nangoto, war nga tiye wanyi ki khayma, te mer bu neka fuka. Bu feke ene kontrak to bi, deku ti bi reo mi, bu boba, di nga waro wanyi, te mer bu neka fuka ak jurom. Li, moye lempo bu nyu nan, withholding tax on kontrak bimen. Li, moye lempo, bi nga khamne yo mi johe kontrak, waru gala, nga wul batu ku dem feyiko, ti maka ni GRA tax office bu lage na jege. Bete ti banki GRA jaglel pur feyi, Lempo. Warga jeba lempo bi si diri fuki fan ak jurom ganaw binga wanye ci xali si contract bi amut ben contract bu ñu tegil feyi lempo bi ana mu fekk ne nguri Gambia ñoko jegale bole si project yi nga xamne mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense GRA di feyeku lempo
He wants a good paying job after graduation, a pretty wife, and ultimately own a dream home. What if I can't afford my desired dream home? And that is why you need to visit Universal Properties. We specialize in customer satisfaction. We listen to every of our clients' needs when we sold the properties to our client. Before you know it, you hear the client saying, I like this house. This is the room that cuts my heart. And most of the time, they cling to the door never to let go. Most clients want to close the deal right there. And that is why we always have their contracts in the trunk of our cars. We work at our client's pace. No haggle, no hazard. We're waiting for you at our office in Kairaba Avenue here in the Gambia. Have you run out of cash power? Do you want to transfer funds to your family? Or do you want salary advance without coming to the bank? Your banking services have just been brought to you on your mobile phone. Download and install from your App Store or Google Play Trust Bank's mobile app. Simply search for TBL Mobile App and follow the instructions. You can access the following services. Funds transfer, cash power purchase, forex rates inquiries, mobile airtime top-up, mini statement, balance inquiry, TBL app is the only app that allows you to take salary advance and many more. You can also interact with your customers using our USSD code by dialing star 533 hash. At Trust Bank, we bring innovation that is useful to you, our valued customer. With our mobile app and USSD, banking is at your fingertips. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Make a difference and text C-A-R CAR to 900 to win a car with Gamsel. Gamsel and Rotary Club of Brusaby brings you a chance to win a brand new SUV Corando. The more you text, the more chances you win. Join Gamsel today for your chance to win a car. Fresh freezers, televisions, smartphones, and lots of cash prizes. Draws will be held live on GRTS TV. Proceeds will be used to help the humanitarian activities of the Rotary Club of Bruce Beat in the Gambia. Every SMS costs ten dollars. Your SMS could save someone's life. Join us and text C A R Car to nine zero zero today. A brand new SUV Corando awaits you. Rotary making a difference. Gamsel Yaiboro. Welcome back from that um, short commercial break there. Um, only this is a very, very sad discussion and perhaps a very difficult one to have. Um, I, I think something definitely needs to be done um, in addressing this issue. It's been, going, it's been ongoing for a very long time. And like they said, it's this year, it's been 19 years, and still now one can say that justice is still not served. Um, yes, Sajja, but then now there's a problem. I think maybe Madi and even Thaini can help us with this because I remember there was an indemnity bill or act that was passed to the National Assembly. So if this was passed and these um, the people responsible are protected, how can justice happen? No, I, I think um, what we have to say is that the, this government, um, one of the first things we expected it to do is to repeal the indemnity act. Now, failing to do that, it, makes, it means that this government is as complicit as the German co government, you know, in this crime. Because, yes, this current government did not commit this crime at that time. One government did, and they failed to do justice. But if you come now, you are in a position of responsibility by law to make sure rights of citizens are addressed, and you fail to do it then it means you have become an aider. You have become complicit to that crime because you allow um, that indemnity act to continue to protect perpetrators, to continue to suppress victims. See, we should not only focus on the president. It's also about the National Assembly. All right. Why is it that two years, not a single National Assembly member, you know, took it upon himself or herself uh, present a private member's bill 
for the repeal of the Indemnity Act. But why didn't the civil society organization push for that? Right. Um, various engagements are going on. That, that call has been made by civil society since 2017. We've made petitions to the government, you know, and to the, the parliament, uh, but no action is taken. Maybe what civil society needs to do uh, also is to take this matter to the Supreme Court, yes. for the Supreme Court to declare the Indemnity Act to be unconstitutional. Because all, uh, definitely it is unconstitutional. Yes, I mean, uh, the Constitution has given no one the authority to damage rights and then get be covered, protected. you know, for, for that atrocity, for that violation. So the, the, what happened in April 2000 was a violation of the Constitution. Because citizens were demonstrating, which they have a right in our Constitution, uh, the right to life is protected in our Constitution, and that was damaged. Uh, the right to freedom of assembly was uh, protected in our constitution that was damaged. And so anyone who damaged those rights at that time should have faced justice because they violated the constitution. But to go further, to create a law that now protects those perpetrators for violating the constitution, it means we have put a particular law on and above our constitution. We are saying now the Indemnity Act is more powerful, it's more supreme than our constitution. So which means the civil society, you know, I mean, and I think that is an issue now. We have started that conversation from, you know, this April 10 and 11 this year, that we are going to meet and draw a strategy because next year, I for one don't want to go and march again, yes. hold a symposium or put on a t-shirt and then, you know, showcase people like Sini just to enjoy their plight and then, you know, uh, pity them. No, I mean, for me by next year, uh, we should make sure from today till next 2020, April 10 and 11, uh, Seni is speaking a different language, is living a different life. Where, where, does, where, where does state accountability begin here? Where? Repealing the Indemnity Act? Reparations? Where? Um, the state accountability... Or, or even admitting the yeah, crime? Yeah, so state accountability... Um, I, I can't even say, I mean, where it, it begins from the beginning and wherever that beginning is, you know, until the end and wherever that end is. So as you said, we expected, like for example, uh, this borough government, they've not, uh, like Jame government, they did not release yep. publicly the April 10 and 11 commission inquiry report. Now, by releasing that report, at least you acknowledge the incident, yes. you acknowledge the investigation, you acknowledge that uh, recommendations were made, mm -hmm. and then take a position that you will implement this report. Mm -hmm. They failed to do that on the JAMI. Now we have a borough government, and two years, more than two years, going to three years, they are yet to acknowledge as a government a report commissioned by the government of the Gambia. All right, so refusing to take responsibility, and that is the first point of accountability, that is to take responsibility. So borough government needs to take responsibility, that we are a responsible government, that this is a matter, because all of the loans that the Jamaica government took, borough government took it upon themselves. They, they, they carry it for them. Because state operation, state policy, you know, it, it, I mean, it's continuous. All right? So why are you taking those ones, but you are not taking this one? What happens if they don't? You think that will be a dent on his administration? Oh, definitely. If they don't, it only shows that they don't care, uh, that they are failing their responsibilities, and they are no different from the former government. Okay, Seni, as a victim, um, let me just ask you, maybe have you guys been knocking on the doors of people in government, try, like the justice minister, trying to ensure that they know what you, what's happening in terms of compensation? Have you guys been compensated, any of you guys? Mm -hmm. You know the serious part of our coming from Egypt, what it cost us? Our medical reports were seized by the government and been taken to the state house. When you went to RVH, ask for your medical report, this, the CEO will tell you, your case is a political case, we cannot handle it. They've come here and your medical report has been taken, it's in the office of the president. Since then, we cannot access our medical reports. The only time that we get medical reports is 
we have these concerned Gambians who are in UK and America. They, they found us, we went to Senegal do our medical tests uh, there. That was the time we have medical reports. And talking of the justice system, as Uncle Madi said, in 2017, we had a statement and there were these demands that were put on the statement. And we write a petition to the Minister of Justice with those demands. I was among the people who took the, <coughs> the petition to the Minister of Justice. We hand it over to him. Since then, we had nothing from the Justice Department, nor from the government. Nothing has come out of it. Because since then, Yusufa is still Yusufa, Sini is still Sini, and many of us. How is your health still? As you can see, 19 years, I am still on crutches. 19 years, Yusufa is still on a wheelchair. So, it's not easy. If you ever had the chance to face your shooter, what will you tell him? The president, you mean? No, the person that shot you. The person that shot me. I can't tell, but I know it's not easy. The person was older than me. I know he has a son or a daughter. The first question that I would, I would ask him this question straight away. If I were your son, would you have sought me? If he answers yes, then I'll, I'll forgive him. But if he answers otherwise, Justice must be served in between me and the person. But I think the government definitely has a role to play in this. They definitely need to, as Mr. Jabati has said, if they are not looking at ways and means to ensure that justice prevails, then they are equally. Mm -hmm. they, they, they like the same government that passed all these bills to ensure that these people are protected. And then for them speaking to the president or even having access to the president for the president to say, I would do my best. This is something that we all have expected. That it's two years now. Before we can understand there was dictatorship. But now for two years, we would expect the borough government or somebody, as he said, in the parliament to come up and say, these people, we need to, they need to be helped. They, they are people, like, right, when this happened, we had, lives were lost, but other lives changed, mm -hmm. especially their parents. We had parents, I, I know somebody who lost a son. Every day, we walked together, he would talk about what his child could have been. He talks about this child every day. And then their lives have changed. And most of them were very quiet in their little corners, mourning their children. So um, we're just urging the government. They need to do something. Something has to be done. As Mr. Jawadi has said, if we have to go out together, mm -hmm. go to the National Assembly and say, you know what, it's about time you listen to us. We have to do it at some point. Sophie, mais on la vous selle, t'es nerf. Bah, n'a t'y halal, ak mak yep, amna calcium, iron, protein, ak vitamin yu bari. Sophie, full cream powder milk la, amna 20 gram, 200 gram, ak 400 gram. Koko nyam, do tu ko bayi. Sophie, proudly Gambian. Hello, Modu. Mod, money. Demal ma jaya le ginga fail ma sumati ketu makabi. Dada demre. Dama demdi jaya le lai demal. Mondo kon fail demi. Hana hamu loan forward demi. Hamu kundi. Jaya enyo hamom. Kon forward demi. Hana jaya yere. Jaya yere kwa forward demi. Sabo sla. Jaya hamom. Socha demi changa forward demi. Bocha demu changa forward demi. Kon demu loan forward demi jini limore. Aja. Wende, sini tuko kaya na. Tuko wai dafu baba de. Jinu fini tuko ndao. Kama dina. Danga na Allah kumar chakaramba. Ngado hundang jinu sini. Ngado hundang kudimu jinu. Makana kenu watu ko. Nyuto diga ba. Danga ita huni sini lampi karambi. Yangu mede kwa na. Kipu kwa hamu danga juli direct kwa ngajar sioni bora.
dem ci xaram ba wa lek ko kay e yow dañuy lek ba doyal lek bu suur ñu dañuy lek ba dessal lek ba genn ci biti bi may kuy fay nak foy fay je eco bank bu la gëna jégeñ dem pa 100000 ngay deposit ci eco bank ñu jox la risit nga dem ci seen makan ga nga xamne mo nek ci mu ci airport ba jox len ko ñu jox la seen risit wa illa nga dem nak kayra ba ci seen office ba 50 kayra ba abonni ci bundingu fid assalamu alaykum wa yow bëtt ko dem makan ni Nah, ada mak. Kamu masih bayi. Kena bujang tak? Kena apa? Jinta. Jinta. Eh, jinta. Jinta jaya lebih. Jaya. Nyonya jaya jatuh sentuh. Rek dapat kau bawa. Deflam. Gambar nasional. Travel. Anak agensi. Siapa kau akan minum tiket lari? Nyonya kau yang. Ajek. Nyonya ajek. Dan dia pun nyonya yang. Nyonya pun nyonya pun nyonya kalian. Mana ni pun juga bicara mula ajek nyonya dia. Mau apa yo? Sen office mana kami mohon nak cek sen buat airport mana? Sen office. Kami minta kata baik. Komplain. So tu gaya kita komplain bila kita layu pula. Jaya nak. Nyal nasional karya yang kita minta. Jaya. Nyal kamu. Seni, what do you want government to do? Like Uncle Mary rightly said, next year, I myself, I am not going to be part of any commemoration, any symposium. Putting on T-shirts to show that I am an April 10th 11th victim when go if government did not do anything. Do you have any intentions of going back to school? R yeah, okay. I still have a dream that the career that I wanted to achieve, I can still get it. It's not too late to get it, and I will I will still pursue it. It's never too late, Mr. Jabata. We'll let you say your final words before we go. Yeah, I mean just to but just the point um, Sene is making. Um, what is happening is gross irresponsibility by our government and gross indifference by our citizens. Um, if, if I were the president of the Gambia, I see no reason, or the minister of health, I see no reason why I would not send Sini and all of those victims to Dubai Medical Center and get the, a first class medical treatment. I see no reason why I would not give them scholarships when government is wasting money, you know, every day, you know, just like that. And you have citizens who have been harmed by, you know, the state itself. Yes, over the past 22 years, there have been many victims, but, you know, the most vicious, the most severe uh, crime committed by Jame is to shoot Gambian children, you know, to shoot Gambian children because that means he has attacked the very existence of the Gambia. Yeah. Because our children are our future. Teacher, yes. All right. Imagine if all Gambian children are like Sini today. Then our society, what would our society be like? Because they would all be, you know, I mean, uh, incapacitated in such a way that they cannot, I mean, fulfill their responsibility to their society. And he has a dream that he is saying it is not too late. What responsible person or government would hear a word like that and you still sit down where you are? So I, I think my final word really is to government citizens. Um, this is probably not even about Baro or Jame or Jawar or who are presidents. This is about you in this country, 50, 50 years of independence. Um, we should not allow uh, such injustice to prevail in our society. Because one injustice, if we allow it to sustain, then all of us are at mercy, you know, uh, of, of such, I mean, injustice again. This is, can you imagine, um, I have been putting on our April 10 and 11 t-shirt this past, you know, two days, uh, celebrating April 10 and 11. I go to places and people are like, they're interested in the t-shirt. Oh, I forgot about this. I'm not like, and you're a parent, a citizen. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I don't remember. I mean, I, I, it didn't occur to me. I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of citizens we have. But you should be registered in your mind that April 10 and 11 is this day. On this day, uh, the government is not just to repeal the indemnity at an, you know, compens I mean, uh, uh, provide medical treatment to these people, but it is also to recognize this day. This day has passed. Gambia government did not issue one single statement. Yeah. Yes, day, I was just going to yeah, ask actually, about that. Yeah, yes. Gambia government How you feel about that? You yeah. know, no political party issued a single statement. And we have to begin to 
hold people to account. account yes. Political parties are very important in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because political parties produce the president, political parties control the parliament. Yeah. All right? And none of them issued a, a single statement or did any activity to mark this day. Definitely. All right? In our schools, you go to any government school, you will not see any poster, you will not see, see any session, any class talking about April 10 and 11. I mean, what kind of society are like we want to erase the history. It's important. It's yeah. definitely important. I think we are running out of time um, right now. Oli, I will let you do your closing before we go. Okay. Um, I, I, as they said, um, this was said by Steve. Steve Biko, he said, in a bid for change, we have to take off our coats, be prepared to lose our comfort and, and security, our jobs and positions of prestige and our families. A struggle without casualties is no struggle. In the case of April 10 and 11, we will pay tribute to Reginald Carroll, Karamo Barrow, Lamin A. Bojang, Usman Sabali, Seni Nyabali, Usman Semben, Bakarinjai, Kaliso Prera, Momodu Laminjai, Ibrahim Abari, Wude Fode Mansare, Bamba Jabate, Modu Lamin Chun, Ali Usanyang, Burama Baji, Omar Baro. These were the casualties of the struggle and we pray that their souls May will rest, rest, in rest in peace. And we're just appealing to everybody who's at home to please take a minute and pray for the departed souls and the government. We are appealing. If it's an appeal we have to do, we are appealing for you guys to make sure that justice prevails for these victims. Their parents have been crying in silence and also for the survivors, we are appealing again to government and to every one of us, we are all equally should be responsible for this because it could have happened to any one of us to make sure that come 2020, we would not be wearing t-shirts, we would not be doing seminars, we would not be doing conferences, rather we would say Wow, look at Saini, he's now in first year at uni. Look at Yusufa now, he's much better. That's the story we want to hear when we come next year, 2020, April 10. Thank you very much, Oli, and thank you very much, um, Mr. Madi Jobate, for granting us this interview. Thank you very much, Saini, for coming. It's really an honor to have you here. Thank that you. was a very sad story, and we hope that government really do step in to make sure that you people are okay. This now brings us to the end of this episode of Kefatu. Do join us next week for another exciting episode. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.